Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a multi-pane or multi-panel chart. Uh, here's an example of what we're going to end up with at the end of this tutorial. As you can see, we have four distinct plots. In this case, they're all line charts on one kind of aggregated chart. Okay, They have a common y-axis independent x-axis and each is separated so sometimes this is called a multi-pane chart there are various versions of this that you can create um, not just line but you could do bar charts as well and and anything else you could dream up honestly okay so uh, it turns out that there isn't a direct way to do this in excel without some plugins um, that you may not want to pay for or um, seek out um, so I'm going to show you the hack on how to do this. Uh, it took me a long time to figure it out, but once you got it down, it actually can be done rather quickly. All right, so let's start with the source data. I have the source data here somewhere. Here we go. Let's just talk very quickly about this. Okay, so I have a couple columns here, as you can see. Department, quarter, discount, retail, uh, total. All right. Um, we don't need to worry too much about the data uh, uh, other than the fact that I want um, a separate plot for each department. Okay, so I want to end up with four plots. And these are the values that I want to plot. Discount, retail, and total. You can have more series than this. Um, this would be considered three series per plot. You can have ten series per plot, so just more columns here. Um, you can also have more than four panes or groups. Um, and then obviously the quarter thing here is sits in between. This is kind of a secondary axis I also like. So this makes things even more interesting. Um, instead of having just a point in each of those panes, that wouldn't be too interesting. Okay, so each one of these constitutes a separate uh, plot, but I want them all together. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, first off, I have to do a little bit of kind of uh, data wrangling here. Uh, I'm manipulating my data here a bit. So what I'm going to do is stagger the data set. So what this means is literally what I'm going to show you here. So you could do this in a number of ways. You can even uh, uh, use some pivot tables to do this. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my actual series, copy them over. Okay, step one. Step two, I'm going to take the first set of data here from the actual series not the axes these are going to be the these are going to be the groups these are going to be the axes within each group okay so i want the actual data that's going to be plotted i'm going to cut that paste it into this new so you see i have like a bit of a stagger now going it's the same data i'm just shifting it this way. Next group, I'm going to keep it where it is. Next group, I'm going to shift this way. So basically, every other pane, which is going to end up in your or panel, that's going to end up in your multi-panel chart, you want it to be on a different stagger. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. Make sure you grab the full amount and nothing more. And this final one is where it needs to be. If I had another group here, I would stagger the data here, and so on and so forth. If I had more columns, I would just end up with more columns here. No big difference. Okay? So this is easily generalizable to uh, other cases. Okay? So now that I have the data in this form, I'm going to go ahead and highlight some things and start creating the plot. So I'm going to highlight the actual data itself three series which look like six series and it's going to be interpreted when i create a line chart so insert line we're going to create a regular line chart it's going to get interpreted as six different series as you can see from the legend so this gives us something to start with but you can already see that we achieved this this staggering achieved this separation in the departments we have to do a bunch of things to make this look presentable or else at this point it's very confusing. Okay, one thing let's do right off the bat is to eliminate this redundancy in the legend. 
Okay, so let me make this chart a little bigger so you could see better what I'm doing. I'll get rid of the chart title. All right, so what I'm going to do is make all the discounts. So I got two discounts here. I don't need them to be treated separately. Excel is treating them separately because they showed up separately. Okay, but for me, I know why I did that. So let me choose a color. Let me choose the dark blue for discount. So everywhere I see this light orange, so I'm going to click on light orange. I'm going to right click and format that data series to be the same blue as the other discount. And so then I'll have eliminated one redundancy. Um, you'll get pretty good with the colors here at some point. So there we go. We have the uh, discounts the same color. Next, a uh, Dewey. Be careful with this. I think it's actually that blue. Nope, that's the blue from retail. So you got to be careful with this. Um, okay, there we go. These match now. Okay, now I'm going to move on to retail. Retail, let's keep it this, this orange. So let's change this blue to this orange. Is that the correct orange? It looks good. Do a double check. Finally, total. Let's make total. Should we make it green? Let's make it green. Green's more fun than gray, maybe. I don't know. Maybe just today. There we go. We've got them all now in the same color. You see all these guys and these guys match. And you can see the lines up here are also non-redundant. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and just eliminate one set of these. So click, click again, delete, click, click again, delete. Okay, you do have to click it twice or else you'll delete the whole legend. Okay, that solves the legend. We can even move this legend to the top and get it out of our face. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is fix this axis. This axis is default and it's not really helping me out. Okay, so to do this, I have this set up. So I'll go, I'll click here, go to design, select data, edit, sorry, edit the horizontal. Let me be a little slower here, edit. And here, since I've kind of got it set up nicely, I can just go ahead and highlight these. And you can see immediately that I'm getting a nice axis, which is nicely grouped. Okay, so it's like a dual axis thing because I have it set up here nicely. Okay, so the axis is taken care of. The X axis, the Y axis is taken care of. It's common for all four panels. The legend is taken care of. So really what's left to do is to get these lines between these to make them distinct. And that adds that final kind of official um, feature that makes this a nice multi-panel chart. To do this, this is where most of the hack comes in. Okay, so to do this, first off, we're going to need to create a point between each of these guys. Okay, there's many ways to go about this. What I'm going to do is find the maximum value that I want on my y-axis. So I'll just take 30. I could have gone with 25 because I don't have anything above 25. But I'm going to go with 30. And I want to plot a point here, here, and here. And if you think in terms of your x-y coordinate system, this point would be 4.5. On the x-axis and 30 on the y-axis right this point will be so this was one two three four five so that was four point five six seven eight eight and a half nine so this would be eight and a half thirty this would be uh, twelve and a half thirty and let's put one here that will be 16 and a half thirty and you could even put one here if you want a line in the beginning which would be 0.530 okay so how to do this so let's pull aside our chart for a second and we're going to create something I already have set up down here a little table of XY coordinates so as you can see I you have to go through the reasoning since this was quarters and this is one two three four in between four and five is four and a half here is eight and a half here is twelve and a half 
and the last bit would be 16 and a half and the first bit would be 0.5 so I set up the X like this 0.5 4.5 8.5 12.5 16.5 .5. okay if you had monthly data you would have had to done tw uh, 0 0.5 12.5 24.5 etc okay so you can think through that for a sec the y-axis is 30 again because that's my maximum value okay that I want to see on the y-axis so you got to reason that because you can control this later and we will okay so I this is always going to be 30 and once I have this set up I'm going to go ahead and just highlight uh, one of these it does not really matter because it's only going to preliminary, be preliminary and I'm going to go actually I'm going to go to uh, design click on the chart design select data then I'm going to add a series I'll call the series V for the vertical lines that we're eventually going to create doesn't really matter what you call it I'm going to go ahead and highlight these values it's not going to really matter for now you're going to see the result is some black uh, or navy blue line here which is not really what we want but what we're going to do now is going to hack this so let me actually decollapse this let's go to change chart type okay once that's done change chart type combo and then pick the last one which is a custom combination chart so click on custom combination scroll down and you'll see all the series that we've created make sure that they're on the setting that you desire so I want retail discount and totals to all be on line charts okay so change that if necessary I want the V the vertical lines that I'm about to create to be on uh, scatter plot so pick scatter for that one the rest are lines okay click OK come back and you see now it's I don't have a line there I have points okay but what this is going to allow me to do is now go into select data then find that series called V which is going to be our vertical lines edit it and now it allows me to put in X and Y coordinates and this is what I needed so let's go ahead and do that so for the Y I have 30s for the X's I have 0.5 to 16.5 click OK and let's see what happened now I got my points where I wanted them you see how you can control that I also by the way got a legend item for this which I'm gonna delete as well let's go ahead and do that actually click click we don't need to see that okay I don't want these points I want these points to actually drop down to make straight lines so next step convert these points to straight up and down lines so how do we do that all right so for this we're going to click on the series we're going to hit the plus sign here and we're going to go to error bars and check percentage okay as soon as we do that you're going to see that we're going to get these horizontal and vertical error lines okay we don't want the word horizontal ones so we're going to go ahead and delete those but not this not by hitting delete we do want the vertical ones but we need to edit those so how do we so let's click on the horizontal ones let's right click and say format error bars let's move our chart over if possible so you could see the result of the work that we're going to be doing okay so we come over here and we're on the error bars when I moved it I, I lost the error bars okay so here we go um, for the horizontal ones we want them to disappear so one thing I can do here is go to percentage and just say zero and that should take care of that okay they're gone now for the vertical ones just click on them if you don't immediately get this kind of extra menu system here you can right click on it and say format error bars as well and you'll get this okay so what we're going to do here is first off check the minus only not both okay so minus that makes it go only below the point and we want to change percentage to 100 percent which is going to drop the line 
drop the error bar rather all the way down to the uh, y value 0 and you see that we have now vertical bars uh, only a few things left to do honestly uh, the only thing I could think of is to get rid of those points we can't delete them we just need to not show them so to do that we're gonna go to click on the actual points go to marker or right click go to format data series if you don't get this menu system immediately go to marker and we're gonna say fill no fill close this out let's take a look at what we got there might be one more well, I didn't like what happened there I said no fill but it still had a circle so let's just fix that no fill we want the marker to not exist no line okay now we're going to do one last thing and that is when we added those error bars our y-axis automatically uh, jumped up to 35 that's way too much um, empty space up here I can control that to whatever I like click on the axis right click say format and you see you can choose the minimum and the maximum here set the maximum to whatever you desire I'm happy with 30 I could have even gone down as low as 35 and now I take a look at my chart and I got myself a multi-panel line chart one chart for each department on the horizontal axis but a common vertical axis okay all right I hope this was help a helpful hack for making a somewhat more complex charts in Excel uh, till next time be sure to subscribe share and like and watch the other 400 tutorial videos I have on my YouTube channel at Jalea Academy. Have a great day.